All right, welcome to Calculate Survival. We plan to survive, refuse to die. Yeah. All right, so today we are here for plotting our coordinates. I'm gonna give you some great coordinates. You're gonna plot sure. them. Then you're gonna figure out the azimuth that you need to walk and also use the declaration diagram. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to give you coordinates. Um, do you have your protractor? Let me give you a protractor right here. The other thing we created was we took a clear piece of um, plastic and we also made, we outlined the coordinates here to line up so we can get our grid coordinates. Because if you can see on the map here, this is one out of 12,000. If we look at this, it's gonna be one out of 25 and one out of 24, so it wouldn't work. So we made our own and put it on another transparency so we can use it for the plots. And we'll show you how we do this when Luke plots his points. All right, I'm going to give you your first point, which is your home point. All right. It's going to be 3, 4, 3, 9, 9, 3, 3, 0. Now, how many points is that? How many digits did I give you? Well, you gave me eight digits. Eight digits. Eight digits is going to get you within how many meters of your point, square meters? Ten meters, because ten numbers is one meter. Correct. All right, so that's going to get you within ten square meters of your point. This is good for accuracy. I'm going to give you your second point. Okay. Which is going to be 3, 4, 8, 9, 9, 2, 6, 5. I'm going to give you your final point, which is going to be 3, 4, 7, 9, 9, 2, 3, 8. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to plot your points, and you're going to plot your points using this protractor. Good. So this protractor here, we did something a little special to it. So you'll get a protractor, you can get any land that protractor, and what I want you to do, which will make life easier for you, is go ahead and put a hole in the middle and then tie a string to it, so that when you come down here, you can actually use this to go along, and you can find your degrees easier. So this way you don't have to use a piece of paper. All right, and then the next thing you have is a dry erase marker so you can mark your points. So I want you to now grid, uh, do your three points and, and explain how you're doing them. Okay. So uh, I know that this is 34 and 93. This is my 93 right here. And this was 35 so, and this is 36. So this line right here, this one's 34. These intersect here and here. So I'm going to go off of these two lines for my 39 and my 30. So I got 34, so from here, 34, 39. Now 39 is going to be really close to 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's going to be right about there. 93 is going to be 30 away. 1, 2, 3. Okay, so I'm right. I lined up that one, and I lined up the 39. Okay, so my point is right there. Right, so that is going to be your home point. That's where we're going to drop you off. So now plot your next two points. Okay. Now, again, we're at 34, this time 89. 92, though, so we've just dropped down to here. This is 45.92. So we got the 92 grid, and then we still have the 34 line which goes right through here. So going from 34, we got 89, which is really close to 90, so I'm gonna just pretty much ride that one for now. 92.65, so that's a six, and the five's gonna be right about there. So once I hit that, that's your 65, and that's your 89, just a little bit back. So, 34, 89, and then 92, 65. So that's 92, 65. And that point is right there. And what is that showing? Showing the hilltop. Showing a hilltop, and, and why is that a hilltop? Well, the topographical contour line, shall we say. <laughs> it goes all the way up 
and shows the the, uh, the peak at 568. So that is a classic hilltop. We have all these lines coming around and out from it. So that is a classic hilltop. What's the elevation of that hilltop? 568 feet above sea level. And how do you know that? Because it says 568. And, uh, Simple it? as that. So this is a topographic map that shows you your contour lines and that's a hilltop. So when you walk onto this point, you should be finding the top of the hill. Yep. Okay, so now plot your next point. This is a 34 line right here, going down. And then I got my 92, 38, and this is 92, because this one's 93. So I'm gonna come from these lines when I take my measurements. So we got a 92, 38. That's gonna be 92, one, two, three, and eight is, eight tenths of that is right about there. Uh, 3479. Okay, 3479 is right about there. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so right between this and this, and making sure that I'm straight. We are right. There. That's our next point. So that's our second point. Okay, and then from there you're gonna end up going back to home so you don't need to plot that because you have it. So the next thing we're gonna do, and- I'm gonna use my protractor to tell me what my compass is gonna tell me in the field. Exactly, okay. so, and what you're doing is you're putting that, that marks, the square marks right where the knot is, right on your point. Making sure I have this squared with the paper. I will go from here. If I can pick it up, oh, there we go. Fingernails are too short. Make that line nice and straight, right to your point, and then you'll read the degrees. Okay, looks like we are at two hundred and fifty-four. So you're going to write two hundred fifty-four degrees next to your point two. Now it's important to note, every one of these maps is going to have what we call a declination diagram. This one here says north and then magnetic north. So it's grid north and magnetic north and it says minus 13 degrees. So that means that um, magnetic north is minus 13 degrees of grid north. So then we need to add now 13 degrees to that number that you just have to have our new north that we're going to use the bearing in our compass. Okay, so that's going to be, do well, I need to add that, right? need to add it. Okay, yeah, that's still two. <laughs> two, sixty-seven. So that is going to be your bearing that you walk on. It's going to be 267 degrees when you use your compass, because that's the difference between magnetic north and grid north. Okay. All right, and you're going to do the same thing for your next point. Okay. I'm at 201 degree. Yeah, so you're going to write down 201 degrees. And now what do you think you got to do next? Add 13. At 13, because that is your declination. So you get 214 degrees. I want to double check this for a second. It's always good to always double check all of your numbers because once you walk it, you are married to it. Yeah, see, that's the problem. I um, was going off the wrong one of these because the inner one has up to 360. I went off the outer one. The outer one goes up to 60, 
63, I guess, or 6,400. All right, so my true degrees is actually 142 and a half. Yep. Right. Okay, so 142 and a half. Well, I'll just go 142. Um, and then add 13. It's 155. Okay. All right, so what you ended up using the first time on this is there's mills and there's degrees. So you used the mills by accident. Yep. Okay, that happens, and this is why we always double check everything. So you're correct now on your degrees. On your degrees, that is what you're supposed to do. Okay. Were you correct on your second one? That's how I figured out I was wrong on my first one. I looked at it I'm like, wait right. a minute, which one am I supposed to use? I'll double check it though, because I really don't want to walk that far and be in the wrong spot. Two hundred. Plus, yeah, two, this is about so. yeah, we're at two oh four, all right, two oh three. Well, all right, so two oh three plus thirteen is actually two sixteen. So you're pretty close. You just you just got a better degrees. And remember, we're still within a 10 meter grid coordinate. So now the next thing that we have the bearings on each one of those is now we have to get the distance between each of the points. Okay. And this is why we made earlier this grid. Okay, so from home point to this one, this point is I'd say. You can bring the camera over on this. So what he's doing is he's lining up the one point with the one end and coming all the way to his other point. So we're at 800, mm, I'd say 20 meters. So 825 maybe. So you would write down then 825 meters. That yeah. is going to be your, your course. 825 meters. All right, and then you're gonna do the same for the second. And that is Probably 200 and 285. Okay, looks about right. All right, you can see that, you know, we have our dots are bigger and everything else. So you can be, not only are we in a 10 meter square, but we can also be just by the, by the, um, the size of the map and everything else, we can also be off by five or, or 10 degrees. So it's good to know, so when you walk your, you walk your azimuths, you're gonna end up seeing where you basically you are and where your points are in location to this map and then find your, your points on the ground. Okay. All right, do you have any other questions concerning this? Are you ready to go walk this? No, I think, uh, I think that pretty much explains it, actually. Yeah, uh, the one final thing is, is looking at this map, you were not on the cold because it's cold outside. How do you think you are going to go back to your uh, home point? I'm just gonna go towards the road. It looks like there's, um, it's pretty flat here compared to this hill here. Yep. And um, yeah, there's the road only about. You can bring the camera over for this as well. The road's only about. If I go this degree, it's about 200 and, uh, 375 meters away. Right, and so what we see here is, is in through this area, we have, um, if we move this, we have a, a road here that comes all the way back to our point. So it makes sense just to shoot out here, even though it's longer distance, because we know we can travel a lot faster along this road. And right here we have um, an intersection in the road that we know that once we get there, we're tracking and then how far our distance would be to that. So that would be the best way to go back. Yeah, and I'd in probably... later videos, we're gonna show you, you know, how to actually um, find yourself on another point on the map to get there without having to shoot azimuths all the way from point to point. Yeah, anywhere from 250 to 230. I'll just say 240. So yeah, about, yeah, 253 degrees would be a good, look, good, uh, good route back. All right, perfect. So I think you're ready now to grab the, uh, grab our uh, jackets, grab our shirts.
grab the compass, grab everything else, and let's go out there and do these points.